is my 32 inch flat screen television. It's got a digital filter and it's got a component input, an S video input, and three back RCA inputs with one on the front. And it sends 100 watts to each of the channels and the speakers. It's got a front RCA input and an S video input on the back. It has two assignable uh, component inputs, which splits the video into three signals instead of just one. I have the S video connection running to the video card on my computer. So, I mean, we've all made a joke that if I wanted to, I could play a DVD on my PlayStation through the television and a DVD on my computer through this screen or, you know, a DVD on, or a DVD playing through the S-Video input on video one and a DVD playing through the component input on video two and a, another DVD playing on this. So I could have three DVDs playing at the same time, but I didn't really do that on purpose. Well, this is for the cable box. This is for the DVD player. This is for the television. This is for the receiver. And this remote, if I want to, if I want to spend the time, all I have to do is face it up to these other remotes. And I can program all these buttons so that when I push, you know, TV, it switches over to the TV and then I can, you know, change the channel on the cable box with these channels and stuff like that. So I could program it all to just have this remote, but kind of like to help me align my thinking. You know, it helps me switch over where I'll be like, oh, I want to watch a DVD player or a DVD movie. So I'll be like, okay, first I need to push DVD here. And then I know that this needs to be on, you know, video four. So I push this four times for my television. No, I today, push play on the DVD player. It's like it, you know, it's just a simple stuff. Rather than just sitting here and being like, okay, I signed this to play on the DVD and I assigned to, you know, what was TV video, I think I put it menu, you know, I didn't want to mess with that. So that's it. I have a cardinal, cardinal rule that I do not watch any movie that has already started. So, because like, I feel that that would be like getting to see the middle part of the Mona Lisa. And that's it, you know, just like her nose and her eyes and her in between her ears, sorta. And then being like, sorry. Um, and I also don't watch any edited movies because I feel that would be like to get near the analogy, like watching the Mona Lisa with a big black square over her face. I don't watch any movies that have commercials in them because I feel like that would be like looking at the Mona Lisa for the first third of the picture, spinning around and looking at a Burger King. Looking at the middle third of the Mona Lisa, spinning around and looking at a steakhouse. Looking at the last third of the Mona Lisa and spinning around and looking at, you know, a Viagra commercial. And I don't think that's any way to view movies. I've always watched WWF wrestling since I was a kid. It was on Saturday mornings and it's still what I consider to be the only sitcom that I actually watch. It's a regularly scheduled Monday Thursday and then one pay-per-view a month on Sunday that I definitely watch now. I know in any company I feel like I have to defend wrestling because an analogy I often use is a ballet. Okay, in that the moves are choreographed and everybody knows the ending. But you still go to see the ballet because you are amazed at how these people can jump and dance. I mean the reason I have such a nice big television it's because, I mean, I watch a lot of television. I read a book about how a television works and about how it's a cathode gun shooting out electrons that hit phosphines that shoot more electrons and that I'm just basically sitting in front of like a radioactive hair dryer blowing at my face. And, you know, that it emits a lot of pink light, and pink light gives rats cancer, and that, you know, if I put a plant in front of a television, the television would probably kill the plants, and I'm much more like things that are alive than I am than this pill home. so. Do you think that watching television is like a religion? If it is, who's the god?
I don't know the people out there on TV. <laughs> Um, you know, like, it's a religion in the sense of that, like, daily I sit down here in my temple and I worship for a couple of hours and receive the gospel. Because I could see it there, I guess. <laughs> My parents right, yeah, gave me love, this yeah. when I was 22 years old and I was so excited because I'd never had my own TV before. I'd always have to rely on their TV, you know, and share time with the family in order to watch TV, which I really hated to do because I really hate my family. Oh my God, that's on tape. Okay. I almost don't like it because it's right next to the bed. And I used to have this rule in my head that I would never have a TV in my bedroom, but I don't have an option because this is my bedroom, you know, because I don't believe in having the television in the bedroom. Why not? Because I believe that the bedroom is the site of all interpersonal, intimate interactions, and this should not be a part of it, unless you're going to watch porn. Television is sort of um, the myth maker for our culture. It's the manner in which we tell stories to ourselves and we tell stories about ourselves to ourselves and so um, it's all about what story intrigues you or what story you're living presently and you find reflected there. In my early 20s I was really really sick and so I was homebound a lot and I couldn't work and I couldn't um, go out and I wasn't functioning very well so um, I didn't have a big social life and my boyfriend had just left me and I was really, really depressed and the only thing that I had to sort of keep me company and sort of distract my mind from thinking about all the terrible things that, was, that were happening to me at the time was watching television. And so I would watch TV from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed, which was roughly, you know, 12, 14 hours. And so certainly I think during that period, you know, that's much more than, that's twice as much as what I was watching, I watch now. Um, but it's interesting, the relationship that I had with the TV then was much more, um, it was much more vital. In fact, during that period of time, this is sort of a uh, personal thing to reveal, I was very suicidal. And I would say to myself, well, you know, hour by hour, well, if you can get through all my children, that's an hour. If you can get through, you know, Oprah, that's another hour. If you can hang on to David Letterman's monologue, you've made it through another day. 